Now we're going to talk about what are called RC circuits. The R and the C stand for resistor and capacitor. So it's a circuit that contains both a resistor and a capacitor. Such a circuit might look like this with a resistor and a capacitor in series. Okay, if we focus on the capacitor again, we talked about them a little bit before, so we wouldn't talk as in depth about the charging and discharging process as we could. So when you first apply an EMF to a capacitor, so if it's in series with a resistor, it's actually gonna take some time to charge up like with those defibrillator paddles we talked about. So, and initially there's gonna be no net charge on either of the plates. So, but apply a potential across it. So, and over time, you're gonna build up a certain charge. So, and if you recall, what's the definition of capacitance? Yeah, they store charge and it, the definition is Q over delta V. And so if you rearrange that, what is Q equal to? Good, C delta V. And so eventually, what you're gonna build up to is a total charge of C delta V on the plates of your capacitor over time. Cool, and eventually, you know, it's gonna asymptotically approach that. It turns out it doesn't reach there right away. And it turns out there's an equation that shows you how that charge builds up. And so here it's on your handout there, Q equals Q max times one minus E to the negative T over tau. Let's get that negative better. Cool. So if we look at just an exponential for a second, so let's just look at the exponential. What does an E to the negative equation do as, a, as T time grows? Goes to exponential decay. So here, our equation is not going to exponential decay. What we're subtracting from one is going down to zero. And so at, at huge amounts of time, this whole term goes away. And what are you going to be left with? Q max times one, which is Q max. And Q max is just C delta V. And so when we said that Q equals C delta V, we mean that eventually, given enough time, you'll build up to a charge of C delta V on your capacitor. Cool, you're also gonna reach uh, your potential difference between the capacitors is gonna change over time as well. If you look at the potential difference across your capacitor before it's charged, what is the potential difference between the two plates of a capacitor here? Zero, but it's gonna grow over time as you get more and more positive charges on one plate and negative on the other. So in this case, it works exactly the same way. So your voltage is gonna grow. So it's gonna reach the EMF so of your battery eventually following the same type of equation. Cool, and if you, sh you look, I've shown you guys a couple of graphs of what this looks like on your handout there. And we'll take another look at those in just a second. So if you look though, so what you're gonna have is you're gonna have, in this case, there must be a power source in here somewhere. You're gonna have conventional current showing positive charges flowing into this plate, causing it to be positively charged. And because it's positively charged, the positive charges that used to be in this plate flowed out of it, leaving it to be negatively charged. And as the charges build, you get a bigger and bigger potential difference here, but it gets harder and harder for current to flow. And so current initially flows up until this point and after this point, but no current flows across the gap at all. And eventually, once the charges reach their maximum, you'll have no current flowing through the wires at all. And so current is the only one that's different here. And you'll find that I equals, in this case, your current's gonna reach a maximum of just EMF over R, so just Ohm's law. That's the maximum for current. And it just exponentially decays as we charge. Uh, so again, as we go from uncharged plates to charged plates, the charge buildup, the charge is gonna grow. Your potential difference across the two is gonna grow, and maybe we call this delta V. So, but your current that flows through the circuit is gonna exponentially decay down to nothing. And so once this is fully charged, no current is flowing in the circuit whatsoever. Cool, if we kind of take a look at what this looks like during charging then. So what happens to the charge over time? 
increases to a maximum of Qmax. What happens to the potential difference over time? Increases to a maximum. What happens to the current over time? Cool, exponentially decays to zero. Cool, so that's charging. We'll take a look at discharging here as well. So the way this circuit might work, so is maybe we have another pathway on this circuit right here, let's say. And let's say that it has a switch and that switch is open. And let's say the, we also have another switch in our circuit connecting the battery in that's closed. And this is how we could charge up our capacitor. And we'd get a buildup of positive on one of the plates and negative on the other plate. Cool. Now that it's charged up though, we are going to open this gate and close this one. So we open this gate, it's no longer connected to the battery whatsoever, but because we close this gate, this is all a closed loop now. And there's a potential difference on your capacitor plates, which means your positive charges, again, we're conventional current here, are gonna flow back around through that resistor till these sides are equal. And that's how we discharge the capacitor. So just change which gates are open and closed. And so during discharge, you're going from a charge state to, and I lost my negative charges here, to an uncharged state on your plates. And so if we do a plot of charge versus time, what should this look like? Yeah, exponential decay. So now it starts at the max and goes down to zero. So you're starting at the max you reached just a second ago and going down to zero. And so what would that equation look like? I can't spell. So we just learned that exponential decay looks like this, e to the negative whatever. And so in this case, q would equal q max times e to the negative t over tau. Cool. <clears throat> and again, here we're starting at a state when it's charged, where we have a maximum difference in potential between the plates to a place where how much potential is across the plates? Zero, Zero difference. And so in this case, our V is gonna look the same way. Again, starts out at its maximum and decreases down to zero. Same kind of exponential decay equation. Cool, now if we look here, the moment you open this gate and close this one, current is gonna to begin to flow around this circuit through that resistor. So, but as the charges equalize, current will stop flowing. And so in this case, we actually start from a maximum and decrease back down to zero again. And whether you're charging or discharging, the flow of current starts out at a maximum and always decreases down to nothing. And so this is the one that doesn't change between charging and discharging, but the charge buildup and the potential between the plates totally changes. And so in this case, the equation is exactly the same. For current. Cool. So it turns out this letter tau right here, that's what we call the time constant. And it's just the resistance in ohms times the capacitance in farads. And that is your time constant. So, and the product of those two just gives you some idea of how long things will take. And once you know that time constant, you can predict how long is it gonna take till I have this much charge built up or this potential difference across the plates, or at what point will I have this much current flowing through the circuit, kind of a thing. All right. <clears throat> so in this case, let's take a look at the circuit we have on the handout here. In fact, let me get it up on the board here. All right, so in this question, we are asked two things. <clears throat> With this lovely circuit, we are asked, first of all, what is the time constant? And then what will be the potential difference across the capacitor 1.2 seconds after we close the gate here? So in this case, first of all, what is the time constant? 
R times C, which in this case, the resistor is 100 ohms. Good. Good. Six times 10 to the minus three farads. And so what do we get for a time constant here? Good. 0 0.6. Um, we'll leave the units alone for a second, but seconds. it actually has to come out in seconds. So if you notice with it being T over tau, they have to have the same unit, so the units cancel. So it turns out this actually has units of seconds. Cool. So now that we got the time constant, the question is, what will be the potential difference across the capacitors 1.2 seconds after that switch is closed and we begin charging this from nothing? And so in this case, which of these equations do I want to use for potential difference? Are we charging or discharging in this question? Charge. We're charging it. We're going to close that switch. Whoop, lost my E. Okay, our EMF is 12 volts. So how do you know that it's uncharged or it's charging? Is it because so, it says it initially uncharged? Yeah, initially it says initially uncharged in parentheses in the question. So when it's, when it's open and it's initially uncharged, that means it's charging? Correct. So if you notice, if it's initially uncharged, Going back to our diagrams here, are we starting out here or starting out here? Are we starting out here or are we starting out here? Here, this is charging, this is discharging. So if we're starting out uncharged, we're definitely starting out. Uncharged means charging. All right, so one minus e to the negative, 1.2 seconds over 0 0.6 seconds. And who's got a calculator handy? I'll round that to 10.4 volts. Cool. So the graphs we had up here though, I would go through and really understand, you know, is this building up or winding down as current is? Or in the case of discharge, is everything uh, winding down? Questions? Oh, was there a second part? Oh, and the charge. Okay, yes. So, what equation do we have to use for that? Yeah, same analogous kind of. My bad, Q equals. And what is Q max again? For a capacitor? It's C equals. C delta V, yeah. So, in this case, we're going to have C delta V as Q max times one minus e to the negative t over tau. I totally skipped the second half of that. So in this case, q equals our capacitance, which was six times 10 to the negative three farads. Potential difference at max would be the 12 volts times one to the negative 1.2 seconds over 0.6 seconds. How come you don't use the delta V that we just solved for? Uh, if you notice, I put C delta V here, but what was originally here in the original equation? Q max. Oh, so yeah, so it's Q max. We're getting what Q is now, but the equation calls right here for Q max, which is the total C and delta V that'll eventually be across that circuit. Point zero six two what? Awesome. <laughs>